<laughs> ah, praise God. Father, we just give you all the praise, give you all the glory. We thank you today for who you are. Lord, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you're an awesome God. You've made a great provision for us. You want us to be successful. You want us to overcome. You want us to triumph in life. You want us to rule and reign with you. You want to give us your, your very presence around our lives so that we can walk with you and talk with you. And Lord, we just ask you today by your spirit that you'll quicken, waken, uh, reveal to us your truth so we can become who you want us to become and not what the enemy wants us to become in Jesus' name. Amen. We are a peculiar generation of people. How many people know that there's a lot of change has taken place since our little bodies came into this planet? So much change. So many things have changed. Uh, we've witnessed so much change. I remember when my dad had to crank the car to start it. Anybody else remember that? Get the old cranking wheel in there, and I'd be sitting in there, and he'd say, pull the choke out, son. I'd pull the choke out, and he said, when is it? Put it in. I'd be, I'd be pushing, trying to get that, that thing. He had a few adjectives. It had a few more names than what they put on the, on the thing that he used to call that car um, that I didn't understand. So we've seen a lot of, a lot of change. Today we've got keyless entry. We've got cars that park themselves. And it won't be too long before all you'll have to do is push a button and it'll say, wherever you are, just push home and it'll take you home. You're looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate, but that's where they're heading, unless you don't know. Uh, washing machines. <laughs> How many of you remember the old copper in the backyard? And mum would be out there stoking her up. They had the old fire going and the prop sticking and everything was bubbling and boiling. They put the, chopped the soap up inside it and, and it was just beautiful and everything come out clean. <laughs> Today you just throw her in a machine, it washes it, it does everything for you. It almost comes out iron. <laughs> won't be long. Just hang around, it won't be long. <laughs> We've got our phones that are... Man, how many people ever remember? Do you remember the old phone that used to have to hold the thing down? <laughs> Pick her up. And, and then when it didn't work, you'd be banging that thing. How many people realize we've come a long way? We've come a long way. Washing machines change. The old copper boilers, all those sort of things. But I want to say to you today, there's one who never changes. He never changes. God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? I believe that the world, uh, the Word of God is still re relevant and holds the keys of life. Every word that God speaks in this Word is very, very real. I believe the church... Uh, is in for the greatest attack. I don't like using those words that's ever happened as humanism and all these other isms. Once upon a time, it used to be the Amorites and all those sort of things, but today there's isms. There's different cultures. There's different thinking. There's different ways. There's the humanistic thing. I, I think that our world has gone through so many changes today. I I think some of the laws and some of the rules that the, the leaders of our nations are, are, are bringing into pass, especially on gender. How stupid can you be? A person with half a brain would have more sense than that. To, to bring confusion and stuff like that into the minds of people. But I believe that the church is under attack as we prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. But you see, before Jesus comes back, I believe that the church is going to be changed in such a way that the church is not going to be like it is today. The church is going to be powerful. It's going to, be, it's going to know God. It's going to move in a demonstration like never before. We're going to see healings and deliverance. We're going to, we're going to acknowledge and, and, and in our sight, we're going to see a move of God. 
Do you believe that today? I believe that today. You see, God's preparing us for His return. That's why we, I believe here at Global Church, I want to be strong. It's no good just having a social gospel. It's no good just having our ears tickled. I believe we've got to be strong and prepared for what awaits us. Galatians chapter 6. I'm sorry, young men, you didn't have this scripture. <laughs> I gave him the scriptures early, but I'd like to have a quick look at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So we, I believe, as God's people on this planet, while we're here, we can either sow our thinking and our imaginations and everything about us in the realm of the flesh, because I believe that the flesh wants to dominate and control us, your flesh wants to rule you. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap of the flesh destruction. But if you sow to the Spirit and get spiritually minded and spiritually involved, well then I believe that we're going to see great manifestation of God's power. In Colossians 1.27, it speaks to us at the end of that verse. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you the hope of glory. God wants to come into us. God wants to get totally involved with us. Church is not something that you just do for an hour or so on Sunday and then forget about it. God's got to be around us and in us and, and through us and we've got to, our minds have got to be fixed on Him. Our minds have got to understand Him. You see, it's Christ in me. It's Jesus in me, the hope of glory. You see, this can be a theory or you can know the truth, and it's the truth that makes you free. God is working something out in us. God is working mightily in us, the Word of God says. God working in us and through us. And there's a war that rages in the, in the minds of men and women. There's a war that goes on. In Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, uh, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You see, we've got to understand that we've got to understand the spirit man. The spirit man knows what he can do. But if your natural mind is set on things of the natural world, well, you'll just think naturally and you won't think in another realm. And God wants to take our thinking into the realm of the spirit where we can do things that are very, very, I, I believe, beyond our natural ability. So you can see, you can think in the natural. You sow in the natural, you reap in the natural. You can think in the natural, you're in, or in your inner man, or you, can, or you can think in the realm of the spirit. You're, you're this inner man, this real you, the real you, the real person. There's an outward man, there's an inward man. There's an outward man that is perishing. There's an inward man that's being renewed day by day. So you can, uh, you can think with your natural man, or you can think with your spirit man. Natural man does not receive the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness to him. See, we've, if we don't understand the war that we go through, then when the attack comes, you, you, you won't know how to handle it. And see, I, I want us to be strong so that we're aware of the enemy's cunning devices. How many people know that he's cunning? He is very, very cunning. He will deceive. We've all heard me say this before. The enemy goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But Jesus is the lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He goes around seeking whom he may empower. He, you, you see, you are empowered by knowledge. You're empowered by knowing who you are. You're empowered by knowing that greater is He who is in you than he that's within the world. It's God in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. If we can understand these sort of things, 
You see, it's not hocus pocus, it's reality. It's very, very real. I'm going to have a look in the book of Romans. Romans chapter... Where is it? Chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Is it all right to read from the Bible? It says here, For the righteous requirement of the law, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, you do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You believe that? You do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So what I'm trying to say, we can set our minds on the things of the flesh, or we can set our minds on the things of the Spirit. If we want to overcome, if we want to triumph, if we want to win in this life, you've got to set your mind on the thing of the Spirit. You've got to know that greater is He that's within you. For, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot Please God. Cannot please God. See, whatever you build in the spirit, you can have in the natural. You've got to build it in the spiritual. We see, we really are spirit beings more than natural beings. I look out here today and I see a lot of natural people. I see your natural body. I see your natural person. But as I'm here, as we're leading worship, and as I, as I watch, and as I look, and as I see your hands raised, and as I see your hearts going out to God, I see another person. I see a spirit, not a natural person, but a spirit person reaching out to God, wanting God, wanting the things of the Spirit. And you see, you've got to invite Him in. You've got to allow Him to come in. It's not playing church. It's, it, we are the church. The one who created this whole universe lives in me. The one who created everything lives in me. See, we're not doing it ourselves. It is God doing it through us. God wants to do it through us. In the Spirit, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. How? By His Spirit. In Romans 4.17, we've, we've said it over the last few months, uh, that God calls things that be not as though they were. God calls things that be not as though they were. God wants to, you and I to start to be like Him. He said, these things that I do, you can do also. So if he did that, then he wants me to do that. So I don't allow the circumstances that surround me, I don't allow the issues that surround me to dominate or control me. Something on the inside of me must rise up. It's got to rise up and I've got to start to speak what the Word of God says. By my stripes you are healed. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You see, you can limit yourself. You can limit and stay defeated and a failure, or else you can break through and start to speak what God says about you. In the Spirit you can do all things. God calls those things that be not as though they were. David a great champion, and we preach so much about David. And if you want to have a look in Acts 2.25, and we might put that up on the board there, how did David do all the great things that he did? See, he continually saw the Lord before his face. And David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. He is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. See, I want us to understand that 
If we change a situation here that says you'll never make it or, or whatever, and we know that David, as a lad and even through his whole life, faced circumstances and situations that were impossible. There was no way out in the natural. And if he would have just allowed the natural to speak to him, he would have been defeated. He would have, yes, he, he felt the pressure of it. The Bible says there when he came back and, and to Ziglag and found that his families and his children and everybody had been taken by the enemy. He said that he wept and he wept and he wept until he could weep no more. But then he did something else. He started to strengthen himself in the Lord. He started to strengthen himself. And he started to speak what God says about him. That's how you strengthen yourself. You don't strengthen yourself by going over the fence and trying to find somebody else that's going to sympathize with you and speak to your weakness and tell you it's okay to be weak like that because you know God understands. No, God has given us a, a word. He's given us the word of God that we can draw on the word and we can draw that word into our lives. It says that David strengthened himself in the, in the Lord. And it says there that he, kept, he saw the Lord always before his face. He was at his right hand. Friend, I want to tell you, your Bible and my Bible says this, that Jesus will never, ever leave you or forsake you. He will never abandon you. He will never leave you defenseless. He is your right hand. He is your back. He is your rear guard. He is everything. Amen. And He wants more than you could ever imagine. Even more, if I can say this, even more than you want to, He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to rule and reign with Him. Why? Because He paid the price for it. He paid the price in full. In Ephesians 3.17, it says that Christ may dwell in your heart. You see, we start to build. We build our lives. We build our spiritual life. So that when something happens, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is the Word of God. Is what God says. It's what God says. You see, you get a person there, and I don't know who he is now, uh, one of the great, great guys that we heard about, the, one of the great big, what do you call it, muscle builders, that he was, a, he was a, a weakling on the beach and some bully quick sand in his face. I don't know who he is. You might remember who he is. But he was, got sick and tired of, of being bullied. So he said, I'm going to do something about it. And he went to the, the gym or whatever you would have called it in those days. I don't know. But he started pushing iron. He started pushing iron. He started to push. But you see, when you start to hurt, that's the, that's the time apparently. It's obviously I know a lot about this. Glory to God. <laughs> you can have a body like this too if you neglect it. <laughs> it's very obvious that, yeah, anyhow. So you, you push. When it starts to hurt, you just keep pushing past the pain. You keep, and this guy became some big muscly guy and, and, and uh, you know, anyhow, that's him. <laughs> what I'm saying is, in the natural, if you live according to the natural, you can build this great big body and muscly and goodness knows what and, and nobody ever picked him again. Or else you can build in the spirit. How do you build in the spirit? How do you build in the spirit? How do I build my spirit life? How, how, can I, how can I develop my spirit life? You see, you've got to push through the unbelief. See, what the enemy will attack you in is unbelief. He will tell you that didn't work. It won't work. It this won't do this and goodness knows what else. It'll tell you you're, like, you're going to have to be like this the rest of your life. You'll never change. It'll never, no, and so forth. No, you've got to push through the unbelief. Just like that man pushed through the pain, you've got to push through the unbelief. You've got to say, no, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, greater is he that's within me than he, than he that's within the world. And you've got to just start pushing those scriptures out until it forms inside you, until it builds inside you, until it becomes so very, very real. Build on the Spirit, you've got to push through unbelief. Building in the Spirit. I'm a spirit, 
being and I live in a natural body. I am a spirit being and I live in a natural body. Proverbs 4, verse 20. I'm going to read this scripture from the Passion Bible. Might have to put my glasses on here because it's a small print. <laughs> Is this doing anybody any good? You want me to quit now or should I keep going? <laughs> All right. I was hoping you'd say that because I was anyhow. Oh, listen to this. <laughs> listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention do all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health. Can you catch my drift this morning? Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you. Pay attention to all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my word. Fill your thoughts with my word. Fill your thoughts with my sayings. Fill your thoughts with my words. And they will impart true life and radiate help. I missed it a little bit there. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Ooh. I like that. How many people like that? Marnie sent me a, a uh, what, what did you send me? A who? A testimony. This guy had lost his voice. He was a preacher. And he got some sort of a virus in his, in, inside of him and, and, it, and it destroyed all his vocals and he couldn't speak. And he was like, talk like this. You talk like that's what he can say. You talk like me. And he's talking like that. And so he had to give up the ministry. He would, went, went, left, left town and went to another city. He goes to a church and a situation. Everybody say situation. A lot of situations that come around your way are God situations. Amen? They just don't happen because they happen. Situation arose in the church where the Sunday school class, the teacher didn't arrive and there was something, they needed somebody to do the lesson and there was nobody else to do it. And they said to this guy, will you do the lesson? He said, I can't talk. I can't talk. He said, well, it's all written out and, you know, we'll help you. We'll get a special microphone or whatever they had for him. And so he, he starts out there. He says, oh, God, he starts talking about the story. And, that. and as he's talking, oh, I got, man, you've got no idea. I nearly jumped out of my chair. As he was talking like that, and all of a sudden he started talking like that, and all of a sudden he started talking like that, and all of a sudden he started talking like that, and all of a sudden he started talking like that, and all of a sudden he was totally healed. Amen. Fill my, you fill your. I don't read this, this Bible all that much. Be careful, dear child. Listen carefully to everything I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, what does that mean? As you get revelation, they will impart true life and radiate health. Oh, Jesus, help us. Help us, Jesus. Amen? What a mighty Savior we have. Fill your thoughts with my word until it penetrates deep into your spirit, into your heart. So you'll build your self-life in the spirit or you'll build in the natural. 
Natural cannot be spiritual. You cannot train this natural body to be spiritual. You cannot train your natural brain. It, oh, yes, it will work. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God. And they'll have all the, the pomp and the ceremonies. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, brother. Can act, but it, all it is, all it becomes, all it will ever become is religious. You can put a pig in a tuxedo. You can sit it at your table. I'm getting the picture. <laughs> you can sit it at the table with you. You can act trying to pretend. But I want to tell you there's nothing you can do. That pig will stay a pig. And the minute you let it go, it's going to go into the bog. And if we're spiritual people, if we try to act out our spiritual life, all will happen to you is you'll go back into the bog. My dog thinks it's human. It's almost convinced me. You cannot train the natural man to be spiritual. You've got to get born again. Faith comes from what God. Head knowledge is just information. Spirit is something from God, revelation. We need revelation today, amen? You see, if God says it, you can have it. That's the mentality we've got to have. If God says it, I can have it. Whatever God says, I can have. Every word that comes from God is impregnated by God's ability to bring what God said to pass. That's who we are. I've got a lot more to say, but I understand in my mother, my, my, my mother, my wife... <laughs> <laughs> she said, if you don't cut it short this morning, <laughs> there's going to be some shortcomings. <laughs> I'm going all red. I, I, <laughs> what do you say? Repent. Ah. God damn. Come next week for the rest. <laughs> Got some good news though. I believe about eight to ten pastors on the Sunshine Coast are coming together to make a stand. This is a beginning of something big. We're already doing a press release. Can you believe that? I don't know what I'm talking about, but I know that's what we're doing. But there's about eight or ten, could even be more, pastors that are going to make a stand that we want to stand for righteousness. We want to stand together. We want to stand together. We want, to have, we want to be a voice. It's going to be a voice, amen. It's going to be a voice. It's going to be a voice. Would you just bow your heads with me this morning? I pray this morning, guys and girls, that this is not a natural war that we're fighting. This election is not really... Yes, it's, it's a very, very important election. But really the battle is principalities and powers. When people want to legislate slaughtering babies in mothers' wombs, when, when they want to legislate stuff to tell our children that they don't know whether they're a boy or a girl, when they want to legislate and make laws and rules that are just going to pull down and destroy 
because they want to take the Bible out of the, the ch out of the schools and goodness knows what else. But they try to do stuff that's not according to your word. Lord, we want to be a voice that will stand up for righteousness. It will stand up for the things that God, that you have declared. And I pray, my God, that this will lead to, the, to a even so much bigger that, Lord, not just eight or ten, but hundreds of pastors across, not just across in this town, but in many towns will rise up. Because, Lord, we believe that this is a spiritual war and it cannot be fought with natural weapons. It must be fought with spiritual weapons. And so, Father, today I just pray that your hand would be upon it and you'll gather people together. That we will settle our differences and, and just have one thing in mind. We want to see Jesus ruling and reigning on this planet. And, Father, we just give you all the praise and give you all the glory. Give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. Amen and amen.